my knee. Hi, welcome to Panda Propaganda. I'm your host, Christian Valencia. Today, we will be discussing GameStop is to give out a promo flapple card with some purchases at their stores. Tom McDonald is to release a new video slash song on Friday. Charlie made the God comments on Eminem being quote unquote canceled. A new trailer for Justice League is announced and the Chargers have signed Corey Lindsay. Well, let's get into today's episode today, ladies and gentlemen. Did I just say today twice? Anyways, yes, GameStop is to give out a promo Flapo card. Now, I've been playing Pokemon since I was a kid. Um, right as soon as I got into it, I, did, I didn't watch a lot of the anime. However, I did play the game, collected the cards, so I'm very familiar with the Kanto region. Uh -huh. The original 150 Pokemon. All the way up into the 5th generation. Which region, I forget the name. I was I stayed up an extra 20 minutes because I couldn't sleep last night. I spent an extra 20 minutes just trying to think of the name of the 5th generation. And I can't think of the name. I can't remember the name and I'm too lazy to Google it. But yes, I was really from, very familiar with generations 1 through 5. Kind of lost interest in Generation 6. I still played X and Y and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. In Generation 7, I just didn't play any games, didn't collect any cards, didn't watch any of the anime. So I had lost interest in Pokemon by that time. Recently, I got back into it, and there's been two generations ever since. Uh, Alolan and Galar. And a Pokemon named Flapple is one of one of those a Pokemon that's been released. Now, I didn't think Pokemon had run out of ideas. I, I, now I'm convinced they have. And that's because of the design of this Pokemon. Now, this Pokemon is not new. However, it's a very s sad or depressing uh, design. It's basically an apple. And it evolves into a bird with apples on its wings and apple as a like part of an apple for its tail if you don't know what I'm talking about I wish I didn't either just google it pause this google it and come back oh wait depressing huh <sighs> but yes GameStop is to release a promo fa flapple card now GameStop has released promo cards in the past but this is the first card which has their stamp on it. So if you ever collect them, you can tell, oh, hey, GameStop released this. This isn't just, um, this isn't a, just a random card. Now, I believe this card is being based off Battle Styles, the soon-to-be-released set. I think it's coming out this week or next week. But it's that design. It simply just has GameStop's stamp on it, which doesn't really make it that special. But if you're collecting, then I, I guess you'd want but you can purchase the card, sorry, you can receive the card as a free gift if you purchase a minimum of $15 worth of Pokemon TCG merchandise at any GameStop while supplies last. Am I going to do it? I would want to, but I live in the suburbs and maybe like a 10 minute drive from a plaza that has a Target and then a couple buildings down is a GameStop and they're always sold out. Literally, I try to go as frequently as I can. But they never have any. This is um, kind of signaling of a bigger issue, which is how popular this game is getting. I'll go off on this tangent a little bit, then we'll go back into the articles. A couple weeks ago in the old episodes, I spoke about how the Pokemon company realized this was happening, and they said, okay, there's only one, there's only one way we can resolve this. Maximize production. They've been maximizing production ever since... February of 2021 and the supply is still not meeting the demand um, it's it's ridiculous how popular this game has gotten excuse me so what do I want to yes am I going to more than likely no solely because there's no way for me to do it I not I'm not gonna wake up so early to go meet the stock like to go see GameStop stocking everything and then like, just not be, just not, it's not worth the time, if you ask me. Now that money is an issue for me like it was when I was a kid, I'm still lazy. 
<laughs> Next thing we're going to talk about is Tom McDonald is to release a new video slash song on Friday. So typically, if you don't know who Tom McDonald is, he is an independent and up and coming rapper. One of my favorite independent artists on the scene right now. Um, he does get very political, which on this show we don't get political. Um, it's just, I get it political in my personal life, but here, no, I try to stay away from that because I don't like politics and pop culture. Um, and I think it's a bit hypocritical of me to listen to Tom McDonald because while I do like a lot of what he's saying, it's like, I always give people crap for mixing politics, pop culture, and then this guy's doing it, and I'm just like, give me more. Give me more music. But yes, he's to release a new song on Friday. Now, he posted on social media he's going to release a new video on Friday, um, March 19th, rather, uh, by the way. But I'm given the benefit of my stupidity and just assume it's a new song, which I cannot wait to listen to and download on Spotify. I will be covering that as soon as it comes out. You best believe, because, again, Tom McDonald is one of my favorite um, artists on the scene right now, independent artist. Of course, y'all already know who I love. I love Eminem. I love me some Mana. My, my Spanish music, Elefante, Camila, my little sister's name is Camila, I don't know why I said that, talk about personal stuff, <laughs> but definitely I will listen to the song as soon as it comes out, cover it, break it down, see if there's anything I can catch, any messages besides the um, explicit stuff he's saying, and I'll cover it for sure. The third thing I want to talk about is Charlamagne the God comments on Eminem specifically Gen Z trying to cancel Eminem. So if you don't know, within the past week, two weeks, Gen Z, that's my generation, the pussy generation, has been trying to cancel Eminem. Now, I've said this plenty of times, and I'll keep saying it, you can't cancel Eminem. Not because of his status, you just, it's just, he doesn't give a fuck. You can't cancel someone who doesn't give a shit. Seriously, the point of cancel culture is to make that person submit to the social to social justice Eminem isn't going to do that because his whole shtick as Charlemagne says is him not giving a fuck he doesn't care what people think the sole purpose for him saying what he says is to entertain people and make controversy that's what makes that's what makes him such a great artist it's the fact that he doesn't care and he has the lyricism to do it and the tenacity of course um, in the Brilliant Idiots podcast, Charlemagne was asked, oh, I think he was asked, or someone mentioned it, and he said, that's Eminem's whole shtick. You can't cancel someone off their bread and butter, basically. He didn't say those exact words. I'm paraphrasing, of course. But as much as Charlemagne, the god, hates Eminem, or I wouldn't say hates, but extremely disagrees with a lot of what he says, because <laughs> Eminem doesn't really like Charlamagne the God, he's always constantly going at him. He has a point. He really does. You can't... I will continue to say this until the day I die. You can't cancel someone solely because they said something that wasn't meant to be offensive and you decided to take it to the heart. Enough said. Next thing we're going to talk about is the new trailer for the Justice League Zack Snyder's cut. So if you don't know, the Justice League was a 2017 movie um, it was, I believe, the fifth film in the DCEU, which is the MCU equivalent of the Detective Comics universe. It was released in 2017, and it didn't, it didn't do well. Yeah, I'm just going to say that right now. I'm a DC guy. I love the MCU movies. Great freaking movies. Incredible. The cinematography, the, the, everything about it is just incredible. However, I grew up on both, and I just prefer DC because it has Batman and the Joker, and those are my two favorite comic book characters. But when it was released, it didn't do well, and originally it had Zack Snyder as a director. However, his daughter sadly committed suicide and passed away, and he decided to step down from the, from the production, and they handed it to another person who I, whose name I can't remember because he wasn't credited as a director. But... Eventually, he, another man took over, and they had to cut out a lot of stuff, and they resh they reshot some scenes, re-edited it, and it was released like that, and it didn't do well. It, it didn't live up to the anticipation that it was bringing. 
it was kind of like Batman vs Superman: Dawn of Justice that people just didn't like because I like the movie. I don't. That's a very unpopular opinion, I know, but I genuinely liked Batman vs Superman: Dawn of Justice. Maybe be because my standards are so low and I'm just very easy to entertain. But the Snyder Cut of Justice League will be released on HBO Max, which is a, sus- a subscription-only platform released, sorry, owned by HBO. It'll be, um, it will be released on March 18th, and today is March 15th, so three days before the movie is set to be released on this platform, they released a trailer. Now, some things that differ from the original movie to Zack Snyder's cut is the huge, the biggest part, Darkseid. Darkseid is basically the Thanos of the MCU, literally. Like, take If you took the MCU and replaced them all with DC characters, Darkseid would be Thanos. Because they're both OP as fuck, and they're both kind of badass. Um... In the original movie of Justice League, it didn't have Darkseid. The primary antagonist was Steppenwolf, who personally I had never heard of until the Justice League movie, which I don't know if that's my incompetency as a DC fan or he was just new. But regardless, I don't care. Um, The trailer shows confirming Darkseid. In the original Justice League movie, it had the... It had dark side symbol, which is Omega. So it's like, you guys want to follow along? I actually got that on my first try. <laughs> um, it in a nightmare that Batman has, he overlooks a cliff in this huge plane, and it has the Omega symbol implanted into the ground, which is Dark Side's signature. And many fans, including myself, were speculating. Okay, well, the primary villain for um. I, my apologies, I think that was in Batman Dawn of Justice, now that I'm just remembering. I could be wrong. But many fans are speculating, including myself, that, okay, well, the main antagonist was Doomsday. So where, where's Darkseid? Why are we seeing this guy or this signature in the movie and he's not in it? Eventually, we thought, okay, he's coming in uh, Batman, uh, sorry, Justice League. And it was Steppenwolf. So we were kind of disappointed. We later found out that Zack Snyder's cut literally had Darkseid as the main antagonist. The foreshadowing was there. We just didn't get the, the delivery because of in real life tragic events. Um, so yeah, Darkseid is the main antagonist in this movie. Steppenwolf is still alive because it's a different timeline than the first one. Because, of course, real life stuff. Um, but... I'm very excited to watch it. I think I might just purchase an HBO Max subscription just so I can watch it. Because I actually liked Batman Dawn of Justice and the Justice League. So you best believe I really want to watch this movie as well. And I will definitely let you know how it is. It's 242 minutes long, which is over three hours long. So yeah. Better be ready to commit right... Wait, hold on. I think that's three hours. Hold on. I'm just going to do the math real quick. Like 60 plus 120 plus 2 is 200. It's four hours long. <laughs> For future reference, it, when this show carries on, I'm the worst at math. Simple math, as you can tell. I'm the worst at math. So if I ever get any calculations wrong... I either didn't make them, and I forgot to fact fact check, or I did make them, and I'm just stupid like that. (laughs) The next thing we're going to talk about, the final thing we'll be talking about, is the Chargers sign center Corey Lindsay. Now, I just discussed this in the old episodes, where Corey Lindsay, the center for, well, the ex-center for the Green Bay Packers, had become a free agent, and that was because he was so talented, he was so worth the money, Green Bay could literally could not afford to keep him. They couldn't pay him the salary that they promised him eventually, so they couldn't meet in the contract, and eventually he became free agent. Now, I talked about an article that Gavino Borges for Chargers Wire had written, and how I really wanted Corey Lindsay to become the new center for the Chargers, because one, they had the money for it, and two, with the, all the talent that the Chargers are getting, the new coaching staff, the 
uh, defensive coordinator for the Rams, is now the head coach for the Chargers, Justin Herbert, as our quarterback. Oh my god, I fucking love Justin Herbert, man. He's he's something else. He. I've said this to my friends, and some of them agree, some of them don't. I think within the next five, ten years, we'll at least make it to a Super Bowl with Justin Herbert. I, and I stand by that statement. Will we win one? I, I think so. Not just saying that because I love the Chargers, but we will at least make it to a Super Bowl. Because with the mediocre coaching staff we had in the 20, 2021 season, Justin Herbert broke a rookie record. And it was one that stood for a while. I think he he beat Brett Favre. I'm sorry if I don't remember. Um, I'm kind of... Oh, no, he beat Cam Newton's rookie record of 20-something um, touchdown passes in a season for a rookie. Um, imagine what he can do with better coaching staff, better receivers. The Chargers are on their way up and I stand by that statement because I love them. Yeah, I got that flag for 2020. Like, good luck. And we all know how that worked out. But, anyways, Corey Lindsay is set to be the most highest paid center in the NFL at the moment. With averaging $12.5 million a year. I didn't make that calculation, so if it's wrong, not my fault. It kind of is, because I didn't fact check it. But the Chargers have agreed to pay Corey Lindsay, uh, get this, $62 million for five years. Yup, five years, and this man is making more money than we'll, maybe like all of us will ever see in our lives combined. That's a lot of money, but he's worth the talent. Lindsay was second in the NFL for the least amount of sacks allowed. Um, so, and he's very athletic. He's very good on the run pass. Very committed to memorizing his, to memorizing the plays, executing until that whistle blows, even a little after. Make sure everything's good. So again, he's worth the money. It's talent that I think the Chargers are really getting their money's worth. It's an investment. Uh, what else? What else? Um, Corey Lindsay is to replace our current center, Mike Pouncey. Now, if you don't remember, I said this in the old episodes, the Chargers O-line, according to the NFL, placed 32nd in statistics in regards of skill. Now, you can say, wow, that's really bad, but they can't be the worst. There are 32 teams in the NFL. If they're placing 32nd, that means they're last. <laughs> and I made this joke before, but I'm surprised that the Chiefs O-line didn't place there. Oh! Anyways, that will complete today's episode, My Embarrassment of Pandas. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, go follow the Instagram at underscore panda propaganda underscore. Subscribe, like, and let's get this podcast going somewhere because... I want to. And you should want to too. I am very committed to this podcast. And again, sorry this episode came out so late. My parents decided to have some family over and it was loud. There was no way I was going to be able to record this episode with any clarity. So yeah, thank you for tuning in and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care now.